This is tutorial 2-1 from GIS Tutorial Workbook 2. In this tutorial we're going to be learning how to map quantities, but we're also going to learn how to create a layer from XY coordinates of a non-shape file feature. Um, it's going to be an SVS file that we, we use. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is open up our tutorial map. And normally what we do is um, when we create an XY coordinate system, we normally add a table into our table of contents. But this isn't an Excel file, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming over to our search window here. And if it's not a tab right here, you just want to go up to Windows and click on Search. And then here just put Make, make XY event layer. Press enter and then we get this right here. What this is going to do is uh, the file that we're opening up is basically it's a, a document that is broken up into fields by commas and in, Two, one of those fields is longitude, the other, another field is latitude, and we'll be able to create points by using those. Uh, so what we're going to, normally you could come in here if it's a table, but seeing that it's not a table, we're going to click on the browse, go to our Esri Press folder, and it's in our data folder. And now a lot of people would think it's this first one, food stores, Hispanic. XLS, but that is actually an Excel file. The one we want is down here, which is a text file, but it's a CVS or CSV. And down here, this is the columns that are broken up into this da data document. And for the first one, we are going to choose. long for the the X field and lat for the Y. Now if we were to create this um, there's a chance that it would not be put on the map. We're gonna have to give it a coordinate system so what we're going to do is we're gonna click on this little button right here which is pretty much just like a browse and what we're going to do is select geographic and we're going to go to a, a world projection and we're just going to use this WGS 1984 just because it's a common coordinate system. We're going to click OK and then OK again. And right down here it shows us that it's working. And you might have noticed a few little dots appeared right here. Um, we can open up this, and this pretty much just gives us a, a rundown of what happened. Um, you can go through that if you want. Um, if it ever comes up a red check mark or X saying that it didn't compute or didn't uh, work, you can open up that, and then sometimes it'll give you a, a code of why it didn't work that might give you a tip on what to go back and fix. So if it ever comes up not working, click on that box. Now we're just going to open up the attribute table for Hispanic food stores right here and see what it did. Now when this was a text file, what it was basically it would be this there would be this title comma space this comma space this comma space and so on that comma let it know what fields those go into 
and this is whatever this is all the data that we have we have monthly sales number of employees zip code state city address and the name of the the store just after looking at that we can we can shut that down now um, now what we're going to do is we're going to show a graduated symbol of for for sales so we're going to go to quantities in the last chapter we did categories but now we're dealing with numbers so we're always going to go with with quantities and we want graduated symbols we're going to go down to monthly sales and uh, they want us to change the size so they're bigger if you're zoomed in having small ones are just fine but we're kind of zoomed out to a large area so you want bigger symbols so 8 to 25 should work and if you want to go in here you can go in here and change the symbol to whatever you want in the next section or the next 2-2 uh, two -two, we're gonna work on classifying in classes where we change these numbers uh, right now we're just gonna leave whatever is randomly generated click OK and as you can see now the areas with the big circles are have big sales whereas the small ones are small sales I'm gonna zoom to the whole page, see if that works there. Okay, that's about the best we're gonna get without with being able to see the whole thing. And as you can see, this one out here is low. Now what we're going to do now is we're gonna open up the attribute table for census block. And this is just census data. And if we go over, they want us to look at the Hispanic population what we're going to do is we're going to see if there is a relationship between high sales in Hispanic food stores and Hispanic population so the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into properties for census blocks and once again we're working with numbers so we're going to be in quantities but we're going to do graduated colors because um, if we did graduated symbols for population they'd be easily confused with the the stores and plus there's going to be a lot of them so this way they won't overlap so we're going to click on here and we're going to choose Hispanic I'm just going to change the color ramp to uh, a light red to a dark red I'm just going to put this over here so we can see the screen I'm going to click apply and now we can see where there's high numbers I'm just gonna hit the refresh button Okay. as you can see some of the areas with large sales of Hispanic food isn't necessarily in the areas with high populations but uh, these are just numbers of actual individuals so what they're gonna have us do is look at more of a percentage of population because right now that's not for these are just numbers there could be 200 people in one area which might be a lot but uh we're just gonna see what it looks like when we change it to a percentage so like right here there's a lot and here there's a lot but when we change it to a percentage it actually might change a lot and as you can see now this area is a high percentage went from being a few to a high percentage of Hispanics over all population and that's it for this tutorial so it just shows you that sometimes normalizing which is basically just making it into a percentage really is a better option because just by doing random numbers you don't know if that's considered a high population for that area because before a lot of this there was only a few numbers but on overall population they're actually a majority of the people there